Now, when we look at concentrations of solutions, I can write in general terms that the concentration of a solution is equal to the moles of solute divided by some volume. Now, when we make dilutions, the moles of solute before the dilution, what's in your stock solution, should equal the moles of solute in your diluted solution. So I can take this concept and write a formula from that. If I take this concentration equals moles divided by volume and rearrange the variables, I can get that the concentration times volume equals moles of solute. Therefore, the moles of solute before dilution should be equal to the initial concentration times the initial volume equal to the final concentration times the final volume. I can also write this as C for concentration 1, V for volume 1 equals C2 for final concentration or V2 for the final volume. Moles of solute before dilution equals moles of solute after dilution can be represented as C1, V1 equals C2, V2. So let's see how we can use that formula when setting up um, a dilution. So here I have an example where a student needs 250 mils of a 0.1 molar, so this capital M represents molarity, which is a unit, which is a unit used to describe uh, concentration of solutions. A stock solution of two molar copper chloride is available. How do I prepare this? Well, my stock solution is 2 molar, so this is going to represent my initial concentration, or C1. This is the concentration that I want, so that will be C2. And of that concentration, I want 250 mils, so that's going to be V2. So what I need to find is what V1 is. So I'll set up my formula, C1V1 equals C2V2. C1 is 2 molar. V1, I don't know what it is. C2 is 0 0.100 molar. And V2 is 250 ml. Um, I can begin to reduce this down. I can multiply the 0 0.1 times the 250 and get 25 molar ml. And then to solve for V1, I'll divide both sides by the 2 molar. Those cancel. And what I'm left with is V1 equals 12.5 ml of stock. So how do I prepare this? Step one is take 12.5 mLs of the stock solution, which was at 2 molar copper chloride. Now I need to figure out how much uh, diluent to use. So I recall that um, the final volume is supposed to be 250 mLs, okay? and that includes both the stock plus the diluent. So from that 250 mils, I have to take away 12.5 to figure out how much diluent to add. And when I do 250 minus 12.5, I get 237.5 mLs. So step two is um, add 
to 237.5 ml of diluent. And that's how you would prepare that solution. You may notice that you could have answered this question by using the dilution factor, so let's check our work by calculating the dilution factor. So recall that my dilution factor is equal to the uh, volume of stock divided by the final volume, where again the final volume is the stock plus the diluent. So in this case here, I took 12.5 mils, and the final volume that it went into was 250 mils. So that tells me that my stocks, uh, my dilution factor is 0 0.05. To find the final concentration, just as we saw when we did serial dilutions, final concentration is equal to the stock solution concentration multiplied by the dilution factor. So my stock solution was 2 molar, and when I multiply that by 0 0.05, I get back 0 0.1 molar, exactly the concentration I was looking for. Let's look at another example where I can use the formula C1V1 equals C2V2. Imagine that I have a 50x stock solution, and I want to make 300 mils of a 1x solution. So what this tells me is I want to make a 50-fold dilution. I want to take the 50x and dilute it down to 1x. How do I prepare this? Well, the 1x solution is my final concentration, so that's going to be C2, and I want 300 mils of it, so that's going to be my final volume, V2. The 50x stock is my initial concentration, C1. So I can write out my formula, C1V1 equals C2V2, C1 is 50x. I don't know what V1 is. C2 I know is 1x. And V2 is 300 mils. So 50x times V1 equals 300x mls. Divide both sides by 50x. Divide both sides by 50x. That cancels and what I'm left with is V1 equals 6 mLs. So how do I prepare this? Step 1 is take 6 mLs of the 50x stock. Now I need to figure out how much diluent to take. So again, we look at what my final volume is. And recall that the final volume includes both the amount of stock as well as diluent used. So my final volume I want is 300 mils. And I take out how much is going to be my, from my stock, which is the 6 mil, which leaves uh, an amount of 294 mL. So to prepare 300 mils of this solution, I will take 6 mils of my 50, 50x stock, and I will add it to 294 ml of diluent. When you are preparing solutions, please remember to include the volume of stock that you need, as well as the amount of diluent that you need. Let's look at one more problem, broken up into three parts. First one, I have a stock solution of glucose at a concentration of 10 mg per milliliter. I want to make 500 mils of a 1 mg per mil glucose solution. 
how do I prepare this? You'll see that I'm going from 10 to 1, so that's going to be a 10-fold, or 1 to 10, or 0 0.1, or 10 to the minus 1 dilution, however you want to um, represent that. But here, I think I'm going to stick with the C1V1 equals C2V2. So my initial concentration is the 10 mg per mil. And I don't know how much of that I need, so I'll make that be 1. I want a final concentration of 1 mg per mil times the volume, which I want is 500 mils. I can then solve for this and I will get that B1 equals uh, 50 mils. So how do I prepare this? Step one is to take 50 mils of the 10 mg per mil glucose solution. Now to figure out how much diluent I need, I do that by taking the final volume, which is 500 mils, and subtracting the volume of stock going in 50. So that gives me 450 mils. So I will add this to 450 mil of water. Second question. I have a stock solution of lactose at a concentration of 20 milligrams per mil. I want to make 500 mils of a 5 milligram per mil, sorry, there should be lactose, solution in water. How do I prepare this? Once again, we'll do C1V1 equals C2V2. This is my initial concentration, so 20 mg per mil. I don't know how much of it I need, so I'll make that be 1. My final concentration should be 5 mg per mil. And the volume is 500 mils. And when I um, solve for V1, I get that V1 equals 125 mls. So how do I prepare this? Step 1 is take 125 mils of the 20 mg per mil lactose solution. Now I need to figure out how much diluent to use. Well, again, my final volume, write that here. Remember, my final volume is the amount of stock plus diluent. I know that I want a final volume of 500 mils. So I will subtract the amount of stock, which was 125, and I am left with 375. So I will add that to 375 mils of water. Now, using my two stock solutions of sugar, the glucose at 10 milligrams per mil and the lactose at 20 milligrams per mil, I want to make 500 mils with a concentration of 1 mg per mil of glucose and 5 mg per mil of lactose. How do I prepare this? Well, we've already done most of the work from these two problems. We know that if I want to make 500 mils at these concentrations, I already know that I need from here to add 50 mils of the 10 mg per mil glucose. We already calculated that from here. Step two, I already know if I have 500 mils how much I need to get to 5 mg per mil if my stock is 20 mg per mil. We did that here and that's the 125. So step two is add 125 mL of the 20 mg per mil lactose. 
Now we need to figure out how much diluent to use. Well, this is my final volume, and we know that the final volume is comprised of the stock plus the diluent. So I'll set that up over here. So we know 500 is my final, and now I'm going to subtract my stock. Well, I have 50 mils of one stock and 125 mils of the other stock. So that's going to be 500 minus 50 plus 125. And when I do that calculation, I will get that I will need to add 325 ml of water. So you see here, all that changed is the fact of how much water or diluent I needed to add in order to get a solution that has those two concentrations for those two sugars.